Unfortunately, it was pretty clear that the crane was not a commercial object. It was too heavy, too clumsy. Um, you could never sell this collection of bungee cords running through pulleys to somebody. It did work. Uh, I had the eerie feeling that something might work better than that. Um, I actually ended up just at one point desperate to in, either have it be better or give it up. And I went into a motel for a week and assigned myself the job of thinking about it nonstop for a week, doing nothing else. And I made drawings and brought drawings and inspected them and just started all over again, morning and night, you know, waking in the middle of the night, uh, taking room service, not talking to anybody, not watching television, like forcing myself to go over the whole thing because I had a feeling it was in there someplace. And if not, I wanted to be done with it and out of it because I knew nobody would ever buy the thing. And I actually, in the end, found a simpler way to do it, um, very like the present way to do it. Uh, I had to give up on this whole idea of the lens from floor to ceiling because it, you know, the crane was not a really a very practical object and made it too heavy. And once I had accepted the idea that the lens height was a little below the waist to a little above the head, well, that's the height of, you know, 90 percent of shots that are made. Uh, then life got simpler. I mean, I would run around the motel with broomsticks balanced on my hands and, you know, holding vacuum cleaners and, you know, making the maids hysterical, just trying to see what it felt like and how close could it be when I ran and where could it really be. And the big dilemma was how the hell do you float it, you know, because an object it, that I was looking at was a vertical object, camera on top, a couple of weights, gimbal, like, you know, the kind that uses a, uh, makes a marine lamp, you know, kind of immune to what the boat's doing. But there was no possible way to have an overhead arm or anything, you know, an overhead structure or overhead with bungee cords. So I actually ended up lo looking at the kind of, uh, you know, those arm type lamps that was in my room and staring at that thing and wondering if there wasn't a mechanical solution, a spring-loaded solution. And so I went out and bought a couple of those lamps and started taking them apart and trying to get them in a configuration where it could be next to you, attached to you, you know, and would still lift something, right? But coming in from the side, right? Um, I could give you a quick primer uh, of how the study cam works with the uh, little little one called the yeah. Merlin that we just did. You want to see that? That'd be great. Yeah. I was going to show this later, but I'll show it to you now. This is the uh, latest and greatest for stabilizing camcorders, but it still operates like the big study cam, with one exception, and that is uh, you don't need the arm mechanism because your own arm is plenty strong enough to support it. So the Merlin is immune to what happens by supporting it. This is what a gimbal looks like in this size. It's, you know, sets of bearings that doesn't care what angle anything is or rotating. And then you have to take the mass of the camera and spread it out a little bit. In this case, in, an, in a case of a big study cam, you put the batteries down here and the monitor, which is what we ended up for viewfinding. But in this case, you simply add a couple of little weights as far away from the camera as you can so that it's very slightly bottom heavy on the gimbal. And once you do that, you have an object that doesn't care, you know, what you do. You could run in place full telephoto. And the missing piece for the study cam that makes up the study cam patent is there are four things. First, spread the mass out. Two, hold it with a gimbal. Three, provide a suspension so that your arm, your own arm, doesn't have to lift it because in the case of a film camera, it's too damn heavy, right? And then finally, give yourself a way to see the image. In the most primitive sense now, camcorders come with that way. They've got a screen, so that fell right into our hands, I must say. <laughs> so here is now a little miniature version of the study cam that can make shots that are indistinguishable from the big one. And it turns out that Steadicam is not just a stabilizer, it's a, an elegant way to hold a camera as well that allows you, you know, to use the reach of your arms and to not have to have your eye on top of it and to have the kind of grace that you could have, you know, in something that's more approaching dance than just, you know, stumbling along. So those four things, after I came out of the motel and after I got one made, 
those four features became part of the patent that was the, you know, the patent, the dominating patent for its full life of 18 years. <laughs> 